So with the growing renewables, of course, we need dispatchable, controllable energy that can be um, uh, steered independent from weather. And uh, the Kraftwerks strategy or power plant strategy is exactly the, the tool uh, from the German government uh, to, uh, to do that. So what role can Unipa play? Uh, hopefully a big role. So uh, certainly we are in a position then to build these plants, to operate these plants. Um, and to make a contribution to energy security of supply. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we are looking forward uh, to do. Yeah, it's part of our strategy. Hello and welcome to Unipass Market Insights. My name is Florian Oberländer and thank you very much for tuning in again. And on my side, as usual, uh, is Unipass Chief Analyst Gregor Pett. And when I mean on my side, you are actually here on my side. Because Very much so, yes. Yes, uh, we are here in the studio. We got quite the upgrade, didn't we? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because the people out there kind of like uh, mm. the format, so this is a nice upgrade, definitely. Yeah, very good. Theo, okay, we prepared um, a mix of interesting topics again. We will talk about the energy markets as mm -hmm. usual, especially oil. Uh, we talk about Joe Biden's LNG decision and also about the Kraftwerksstrategie, a very nice German word, basically means power plant strategy uh, from the German government. However, we will start with the E-World, one of the most important energy conventions of fairs in Europe, mm -hmm. um, which is currently taking place in Essen, so just around the corner, and you were on site yesterday and the day before. Um, can you give us an and kind of insights what the, the themes were, what the topics were, and what the overall mood was. Um, yeah, absolutely. It was, was very buzzing. So it was uh, it, it's getting bigger every year. So that's uh, the impression. So it was uh, was very busy, mm -hmm. and the topics are increasingly uh, well hydrogen, ammonia, uh, green uh, PPAs, um, and uh, all the topics that need a lot of discussion. So uh, the. Uh, uh, E-World has very much developed into a space where these things are discussed and technology. Yeah, the use mm -hmm. of technology, um, IT for trading and, and, and sales. Um, so it's very much a platform for that as well. Mm -hmm. So quite good developments also on our stand. Uh, a lot of traffic and a lot of customers visiting us there. Yeah, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw uh, pictures of the stand, which was, was really, mm -hmm. really nice, mm -hmm. a new layout mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, so um, to the people out there, if you want to get some impressions, make sure to visit uh, Unipa on LinkedIn. Uh, we have some videos and pictures for you there as well. Um, but how was the overall mood after, you know, the last few years was it it was good because it's uh, it's good to meet in person so we have yeah. uh, of course there was quite um, um, well a low period uh, due to covid or yeah. uh, last years and uh, it's now back fully so that's good to see that yeah good to see and um, we can now move on to the energy markets of course um, something we discuss mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis as well continue to see bearish movements there for power for gas for mm -hmm. co2 and so on um, the fundamental situation seems to be healthy at this point, uh, if you want to call it that way. The only commodity where we see a little bit of a different move is oil at the current um, moment, uh, which is more sideways. I think for Brent, we are moving around the uh, $80 per, mm. per barrel mm. level. What is the reason for the side mo sideways movement there? Mm. Well, overall, we have um, uh, enough supply of energy uh, physically. Uh, to cover the needs. Mm. Um, I probably wouldn't ca call it healthy because the reason behind that is that on the one end we have uh, the uh, global crisis which also uh, uh, threatens supply to an extent mm. uh, as uh, for, for example Seaborn's uh, supply uh, of oil and uh, also liquefied natural gas through the, the Red Sea so mm. that is uh, um, threatened. Um, on the other hand we see also weaker economic climate globally and in particular in the Eurozone and also in Germany the uh, outlook uh, by the government was released yesterday mm. and that sees it's, it's quite a, a, a weak out outlook and uh, so we overall see also less demand for energy so the supply is able to meet that um, um, uh, that demand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I would very much prefer that we have a, a strong economy that needs more energy and also yeah. unthreatened supply to, m to match that. Uh, but that's not the situation currently, yeah. unfortunately. That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about gas in that regards, um, we recently had news from the US mm -hmm. and when it comes to uh, LNG. Um, Joe Biden uh, pressed the, the pause button mm -hmm. on um, kind of the approval process for 
uh, current and also future um, export mm -hmm. projects when it comes to LNG in the US. Um, what is the reason for that? What are the details? And, and can we expect any disruptions of uh, supply? Yeah, the reasons are mainly environmental. So mm -hmm. we uh, have elections uh, coming up in the US uh, this year. Um, which means then uh, every party is pol positioning themselves uh, when it comes to <coughs> their topics and environmental topics are obviously um, uh, very important also for, for, for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, so th this is why there's a lot of uh, discussion back and forth. Um, we, uh, on the other hand, see no threat to uh, security of supply okay. immediately. So mid to uh, short to midterm, uh, the projects that deliver right now are not affected mm -hmm. by the mor moratorium. It will be future uh, projects and those won't come online uh, until a few years of now. And it's, it's more the, the second half of this decade where this would become relevant. Having that said, there's a lot of things that can happen. So there's uh, discussion. Um, right now on the, the practical implications of that, uh, mm. that moratorium, how, what is uh, basically approved and permitted by whom in the administration. Uh, we also know that um, the majorities in the Congress uh, etc., are, are, are split, so it's not easy to get any policy yeah. quickly through. So, uh, and then of course there's the election. And uh, so, uh, it, uh, so there's a long time now to see what, how it um, eventually will play yeah. out. And it's too early to say what it exactly means, but short to midterm, the impact is uh, basically very small. Okay. So, of course, elections in the U.S. is something we will probably talk about at a certain point I as well so, yeah. when it comes mm -hmm. yeah, it's very about much a big, energy. Big event, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and something that we will take a close look at, uh, you know, what, what will uh, the decision of Joe Biden end up to be? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if it's not impacting Europe directly, it could impact also Asia. And, of course, we, you know, we compete mm -hmm. for LNG with Asia to a certain degree, so that it would have an effect on us, of, mm -hmm. of course, as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But let's move a little bit closer to home now. Mm -hmm. um, I already mentioned it, the Kraftwerksstrategie, the power plant strategy. Um, here, the German government um, announced like the key elements of it. What are they and what is the impact? Yeah, so Kraftwerk's got nothing to do with the band of the same name <laughs> that is from Düsseldorf. Um, it's actually the German uh, government's st strategy to fill the gap for dispatchable um, energy that yeah. is emerging due to the phase out of, uh, in particular, coal. Mm -hmm. um, so with the growing renewables, of course, we need dispatchable, controllable energy that can be um, uh, steered independent from weather. and. Uh, the Kraftwerks strategy or power plant strategy is exactly the, the tool uh, from the German government uh, to, uh, to do that. So we are very happy that it's, it's out now. It's been delayed mm -hmm. due to the budget discussions for a while. So we are very happy that, uh, that, that we have it right now. It's a bit smaller than the initial ideas that were, were discussed, but it's, a, it's in a very good uh, first step. Mm -hmm. The details are not yet clear. So um, the, the, how the auctions, the tenders will work will be clarified later. Yeah. That is, of course, a very um, important detail because it uh, determines um, how um, economic then the plants are that will be built under that regime. That it's not yet clear. But uh, we are very much looking forward to that clarification yeah. uh, being here soon. So it's, it's a very important instrument uh, to guarantee security of supply in the electricity market in Germany, in Europe yeah. uh, for the future. Okay. And what could be the impact on Unipa or what role can Unipa play? Uh, hopefully a big role. So uh, certainly we are in a position then to build these plants, to operate these plants. Um, and to make a contribution to energy security of supply. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we are looking forward uh, to do. Yeah, it's part of our strategy. Good deal. All right. Well, Gregor, thank you very much. I will make sure to add Kraftwerk to my playlist uh, for the ride home. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Autobahn. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for the, for the insights. And hopefully we can uh, come back to the studio next time again as well. Absolutely. All right. See you later. And to you out there, thank you very much for watching or listening. Hope you tune in next time again. Until then, bye bye.